So thanks, Emily, for having me. Thanks, ASWF, for having me. Um, I've got 10 minutes, so I'm going to run through this. If you have questions afterward, do not hesitate to come find me either here or tonight, or we'll be at SIGGRAPH all week, so you can come find us. Let's start with what is Alma Linux. Uh, a little bit of history without getting too deep into the, uh, <laughs> the drama of the last four years of the enterprise Linux system, uh, enterprise Linux ecosystem. We are a three-year-old RHEL compatible operating system with 10 years of support for each major version and more than 55 million installs worldwide. The operating system was born out of a need to have a no-cost version of Red Hat that was what we all used in CentOS uh, after CentOS was discontinued. We build from the same sources that Red Hat does. We support all of the major architectures that are used in most places. We have support for like Pi 3 forward, and uh, because we're at dorks, we're also already playing with RISC-V. Risk that makes us the perfect match for a bunch of use cases all over the place. Everything from your normal home lab and home automation users to CERN, who uses us for uh, uh, analysis and automation and uh, research, to high performance computing, to uh, we obviously have a very strong community in VFX, which is the only reason I'm here and know about this event at all. From the everyday to the remarkable, it's, we're finding Alma Linux everywhere. You, we're actually even used on BART and the Parisian uh, uh, Metro. I keep finding these things on Twitter. People take a picture and then I know that we're there. So that's kind of exciting. You can use Alma Linux basically anywhere you want to be. If you need it, it's probably there. We've got images for everything. We've got, I have yet to find a web hosting provider, whether it's a cloud or bare metal or wherever, that doesn't have Alma Linux as an option. If you find it and you need it and you need help getting it from them, email me, I got you. So then the question is who is Alma Linux? That's one of the things that I, anybody who is ever asking about participating in open source, I tell them, look to see who is there and who's contributing. We're gonna talk about it from a couple different perspectives. From our perspective at the foundation, the problem with CentOS was that there was no central ownership and governance, no, uh, what's the word I wanna use? Where nobody has control? Who wants to help me? Same, well, no, kinda, that's all right. Uh, neutral, neutral is the word I want. Where, where there's neutral governance, neutral control of the project. And that for me was the big thing, right? For all of us that at the foundation as we put it together, that was the thing we wanted to make sure always happened was nobody could decide, no business could walk in and no one person could walk in and make all of the decisions. By the release of our first version on Linux 8.3, uh, three months after we announced that we were going to, we had set up the foundation, we had our first board, uh, and we had formed the nonprofit that we are now. The foundation is headed up by a volunteer board of community elected directors. The board is made up of a bunch of folks. Oh, that's supposed to be full screen. You guys didn't say nothing. You're such a polite crowd. <laughs> um, the board is made up of a bunch of folks that have a lot of understanding about software in general and open source. <clears throat> and actually, everybody on there, hilariously, at this point, everybody on the board is actually employed by one of our sponsors. I am the last one to get that. I was the chair for two years. And then last year when Microsoft laid everybody off, um, I, our, our platinum sponsor, one of our platinum sponsors came to me and said, can I just pay you to do this full time? And I said, yes. <laughs> uh, the board's job is to ensure fiscal responsibility and to decide on the like high level, define the general vision of the project. We 
added a little bit more structure at the foundation this year in the form of an engineering steering committee. We, the, the people on this slide are the people who are doing the hard technical work all the time. They act as a central meeting point for anybody that needs to collaborate on anything in the project itself. And they, are, they actually just had their first meeting, and that's exciting. They talked about a whole bunch of stuff that is gonna happen with um, Linux 10, and are the, the, we're expecting um, Linux 10 next year, and it's gonna be an exciting, exciting year, I think. We're funded by sponsors, so the, every logo you see up there provides us either cash or people or uh, hardware or a, a mix of all three. And we're up to almost 30 sponsors now. And that, to me, proves that we are continuing to solve a problem that's needed to be solved by our community. The, we're adding almost one a month at this point, and that is as the person who is supposed to be going out and finding sponsors and has no time to do it, I cannot be more excited that they just keep showing up. The operating system is delivered by a network of uh, just, when I looked this morning, there were 401 mirrors. Uh, that th Those are all provided by volunteers or, or mirror sponsor members who want to give support to the project in some way. And it's, that mirror system is geolocation aware. So when you download updates, it's pulling them from the mirror that's closest to you. So you're not pulling from all, all over the place. So what do we do? Obviously, we release an operating system. And as we were going through everything at the team planning meeting earlier this year, we realized that we kind of had an unintentional mantra, which was this. We, like I said earlier today, I have been just like, super excited and blown away by all the stuff that you guys worry about every day, all the stuff that you care about. The colors presentation earlier, I was like, I didn't even think about. Like, that's not a thing I've ever thought about. And to me, the operating system that's underneath your stuff should be the thing you worry about least. That's why we focus on this. We don't do anything that would create drama in either how we release or how we operate because that's not, how, that's not helpful for anybody that's using us. Almost immediately last year when we stopped using RHEL as our direct upsource and just started duplicating the work that they were doing, we saw the benefit of our new freedom because there was a, a massive root level exploit that RHEL was dragging their feet patching and if we had still been tied to them as our upsource, our, our upstream, we would have had to wait to patch it. But because we weren't, we pulled in the patch, we tested it all over the place, and then released it. And the day that we did that, we were all like, okay, <laughs> nothing's gonna explode, right? Because it was scary. And since then, there have been a few other times that we have found a major, not found, but been alerted to a major flaw that caused problems for our users and needed to be pushed out. Uh, if anybody's using Houdini, then, yeah, I didn't put it on there, but if you're using Houdini and, you can't, and you're using an uh, enterprise Linux operating system that you can't upgrade to 9.4, we have a patch that we're testing. Go to the blog. There's the most recent blog post is asking for testers for the GLOBC patch. So that kind of stuff for me is really exciting. One of the other projects that we are responsible for is a thing called Project Elevate. Coming from the web hosting industry, I am very, very familiar with, eh, that box over there makes money and I don't need to touch it, so I'm not going to. And it breaks my heart knowing how many old devices there are still just out there with network access getting exploited regularly and being used to do bad things. So it makes me happy to talk about this, which is allowing you to upgrade from CentOS 6 or CentOS 7 to a version of an operating system that is valid and supported. I need to update this image, I just remembered, because CentOS Stream 8 is now out end of life. So there's some stuff to do there. But you can upgrade 
from CentOS or Scientific Linux, actually. Um, it, Elevate has been used to upgrade more than a half a million devices, and it's super, just makes me so happy, especially when I see stuff like this. Like this guy came into the chat and needed help, and one of our engineers, one of the people that were working on Elevate helped him through it, and in about six hours, he took that device from an operating system that was installed in 2004 to nine. And it's that kind of stuff that's just like, mm, doing it right. The other thing is our build system. I'm just over 10 minutes now, so I'm, not, I'm gonna start speeding through this real quick. Our build system is completely for us, and it's exciting, you can take a look at that. If you wanna help, uh, all of the normal ways, right? We all know how, what open source needs in general. So come help us out if you've got time and energy. If it's not for us, pick your favorite project and go do it. I, it's, it's well worth it. If you wanna learn more about us, the folks at the Admin Mag Magazine put out this focus guide that has a bunch of articles that they wrote about us and then an interview with me and a couple of the other uh, folks in, involved in the project that is actually really cool. I'm, excited about it. And like I said, we're at SIGGRAPH this year, so you can come find me right there. Uh, I've got stickers. <laughs> and thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for doing it.